I'm joined by Rashnara Ali, the Labour MP for Bethnal Green and Bow. For the Conservatives, the former Crossrail Minister and MP for Chipping Barnet, Theresa Villers. And for the Liberal Democrats, the Kingston and Surbiton MP, Ed Davey, who's his party's Home Affairs spokesman. Welcome all of you. Theresa, first of all, when you were Crossrail Minister, could you see that there were troubles ahead? Well, when I was in charge, the programme seemed to be going very well, and certainly I would routinely get the officials in to say, how's it going, where are the risks? You know, you have to keep on top of these, these projects, and I think it's a concern that the mayor has um, overseen what is now a serious postponement, and I think it's symptomatic of his mismanagement of the transport system in London. So is it the mayor's fault, Rashtara? Well, it's really interesting that Theresa's conveniently forgotten to mention the Transport Secretary, who's been the most accident-prone transport secretary in British political history. So the fact is that this is a joint responsibility between TfL and the government, and the failure is in terms of resource, resources and oversight by national government. And what we've discovered, what we've recently found, is that very important vital information has been withheld from the mayor. Uh, that's not acceptable, and the delays need to be sorted out. The resources need to be put in to get it sorted out, so that Londoners don't suffer. That's more that's money you're talking happening. about. Resources means more money. Of course, money. because Transport for London has had a massive budget cut. Uh, how much more money, Ed, should we be spending on Crossrail? Well, it's we already said, two billion over. We've just got to get a grip of the management, frankly. Mm. And rather than the blame game, you heard from my Liberal Democrat colleague on the Assembly, Caroline Pigeon, that they've done this report actually looking and making recommendations of how to take this forward. And that involves getting the management right, managing the risk properly. Theresa said that in government she did that. We need the mayor to do that. We need actually the Transport for London Commissioner uh, to get his act together because I think his head is on the block at the moment. And Londoners want to know why this has been delayed and they also want to know well all these other things aren't happening the cycling lane you heard about of that dangerous uh, roundabout Hammersmith Bridge and in my area we were looking forward to decisions about Crossrail 2 which will be the success succeeding program which could bring huge relief to the congestion on our railways it looks like that's now been kicked into the long grass because of the failure of, on Crossrail and people are pretty angry about it. Theresa were the original expectations over ambitious over optimistic no, I don't believe they were. And, and actually the government has stepped up and, and helped bail out the mayor on, on the Crossrail project with significant um, lending. But the trouble is, you know, the mayor came into office with promises on partial fares, freezes, on delivering projects he simply couldn't afford. The, it, this is an illustration of it doesn't matter what spectrum, what part of the spectrum of the Labour Party you're on, you still end up spending money that you can't afford, you have to borrow to bail yourself out, and that leaves you open to um, the bill is left with fair payers and council taxpayers of the future. Rishnara, you mentioned That's... warnings to the Mayor being watered down. Now, this was a finding of the London Assembly earlier this week, and they yeah. blamed Mike Brown, the Commissioner. Let's have a listen to what his response was today when he he spoke to Caroline Pigeon, as Ed mentioned, in the London Assembly earlier today. Given the evidence in our report, we recommend that you reflect on whether you think we're fit to continue in your role at TfL. And I was wondering perhaps if we could address that one first. So no, I'm not reflecting on whether I'm fit to be in position. I believe I am. I've got full support of the Mayor. And um, that's the end of that issue from my, my point of view. So Mike Brown not reflecting on his position. Should he stay or should he go? Well, look, I think the most important thing, and I agree with Ed, that the governance and the management has to be uh, um, sorted out, and we need to make sure that this project is delivered as soon as possible, given the delay, given the cost, because Londoners are suffering in terms of resources. And, and just on the wider point, the government has made very dramatic cuts to policing. We've lost uh, many thousands of officers in London. I see that in my constituency. The mayor has had to increase council tax to pay pay for that and put money into youth, uh, youth provision because of the youth service cuts. So there have been cuts in every direction. To say that the government, uh, the mayor is now responsible for all these failures that the government has instigated through dramatic funding cuts, which hadn't happened in the previous administration, it's got much worse, is really unfair. And I think the, the time and again we have these discussions, but essentially what Londoners need is for national government to work with the city mayor, whichever political colour they happen to be, to get things right, because that's what Londoners It's true, Theresa, isn't it? Wants. Chris Grayling seems to have got away 
with this one particularly, the, the finger of blame is pointed at Transport for London and City Hall, but the Department for Transport is involved, closely involved in, in tr Crossrail. But ultimately, this, this is the, you know, the mayor who has mismanaged the TfL budget, spent more than he can afford. He's thrown money at things like the pedestrianisation of Oxford Street, which isn't happening. He's thrown money at many cycle schemes that are unpopular locally and probably unnecessary. He has choices he has made decisions he needs to take responsibility for his own spending decisions i mean after all we've seen the number of officials at city hall mushroom under his remit that those are resources that could be spent on new rolling stock on the northern line which the mayor has cancelled or they could be spent on more police officers he can't always blame the government for his overall resources he has choices and he Ed, has to take Ed, who, responsibility who do you blame mostly government or, or uh, mayor? perhaps they have blamed both of them i mean Theresa as cross <laughs> <laughs> minister uh, was clear that she was involved in it. Um, Are you involved in the same government? Mr. Mr. Grayling, I was in the transport uh, department. Uh, Mr. Grayling ought to be on top of this. I'm afraid he has a record of failing yep. miserably time after time. And let's remember, you can't just delegate this to the Mayor of London. This is a national project, having massive national implications in, the, in our capital. He should be working with the Mayor. They should be sitting down together. I blame both of them. Why aren't they sitting down together, sorting this out together, bringing their Department of Transport's officials together with the TfL? It's a failure on both their counts. It is the implications for other transport schemes that we've talked about that is worrying. Do you blame the Mayor for partially freezing fares? for causing some of uh, Look, TfL's... Fares, fares went up dramatically under Boris Johnson when he was mayor, and at the same time, people's uh, real wages were frozen for nearly a decade now. So what the mayor did was try and increase use of public transport, such as buses, cycling, um, and that requires better subsidies. He's done that on transport, um, in bu on buses and on the underground. So, you know, what he's done is been true to his principles about being uh, making sure that we reduce carbon emissions. Now, you can either uh, encourage people by giving them subsidies to do that, or you carry on with a situation where you don't have use of buses and, and cycling and encouraging cycling. If the, if the mayor of, former mayor of London, who started some of the cycle lanes, um, you know, when he did it, it was all perfect as far as people like Theresa are concerned. <laughs> Suddenly, sure if it's a, Labour, it's a Labour mayor trying to do these things, it becomes problematic. And I just think it, Ed's right. We need to make sure national government and city, gov uh, city governments work together to improve the quality of life for, for people. And that's what really counts. Do you, do you, think, do you think any future mayor can afford another partial fares freeze like this one or do you think this one will, will die at the end of this mayoral term? Well you saw the budget uh, that was uh, announced, you saw the amount of, of cuts, you saw the overspending, it's a huge problem, I mean TfL's finances are in a complete mess and so any mayor's got to be very careful about what they promise but government has also got to realise uh, that it's got to give proper support. Government cuts, subsidy cuts are partly the problem with TfL's budget aren't they? Look, there, there were some reductions in the budget, but that is not an Quite excuse large for ones. the mayor. Um, but what I, would, what I would respond, of course I agree that it's important for the government and TfL and the mayor to work together to try and resolve the problems with Crossrail. And indeed, that is exactly what is happening. And as a result of the request that the mayor has made, the Treasury and the DFT are providing significant extra resources and extra borrowing capacity to enable to, to get the mayor through this initial crisis. But he, he simply cannot blame all of this on um, the reductions in subsidy from central government because you know, he's the mayor of one of the greatest cities in the world. He has to take responsibility for his decisions on fares and his decisions on spending. Briefly, we're... we're Le just a year away from the next mayoral election, despite all the problems Sadiq Khan has had with Crossrail and funding, will he be elected again? Well, I very much hope so, because Sadiq's had to work under huge challenges, particularly around crime and police cuts, as well as youth service cuts and the rest of it. And he's inherited a very difficult situation, so I hope will he, people will, he will vote again? Him, vote for him again. I very much hope that Sean Bailey will win because I think Sean's got much better ideas on how we Ed, tackle crime. There's an amazing lady called Siobhan Benita. She was in Whitehall delivering things. And the problem with Sadiq Khan, he's not delivered. Siobhan Benita can. She's a good Liberal Democrat. Thank you very much indeed. We've run out of time. Thank you to all my guests tonight. Susan, Jenny, Rashnara, Teresa and Ed. I'll be back next month, just a week before the European elections, assuming the government hasn't...